So Sutton United, rock bottom of League Two, are now scrapping with my team to try and stay in the league. Out of Grimsby, Colchester, Forest Green and Sutton, Sutton are the ones rock bottom. As today, there's only one way out for them, and that is actually me rebuilding them. As right here, I am going to take over the worst club in League Two to try and make them better. And do you guys want kits like this one, this one, or even this one? If you do, make sure to check out Soccer Deal Shop. Link in the description. Cheap and affordable replica kits. And if you use MWS in the promo code checkout, you get yourselves 10% off. As the rules of this save are basically non-existent, it's just going to be me taking over this club. As Sutton United need a rise. And sorry, Stephen Morris, but you haven't done a good job. As yes, you saw that it was me that took over as I'm going wing play and only having one coach. And that is because I am wary of the budget. Only two million pounds, which I want to spend on players. As speaking of such, we have these at our disposal and... It's not very good. A couple of 62 ratings and 163. Omari Patrick, who has to be our main man. Oh, and also, also, we have this man, Charlie Lakin, who shushed the Grimsby fans once he scored against us. I think we know what that means for old Charlie Lakin. Terminate the loan. You won't be missed. As that gives us a clear position on where we need to sign. And that is central midfield. We've got Duke McKenna on this bench, who's on loan from QPR. But I want someone better. As I believe first thing we do before signing any players is see if anyone in our academy is worthy. Now our highest rated player out of the four is 47 rated. So they're not being used. And after contracts, we still have a bit of money. Still 2 million it's saying. With no one in the academy, no one needing to sign up, we can actually spend that all on a midfielder. As I think I've found a good way of signing players, signing all from the same league and one you might not expect. As welcome, firstly, James Clark from Bohemian FC for only, what, 300k? He's the centre mid we needed and actually they're not all from the same league as this man's from in our league, Rosari Longello, coming from Accrington as a left back. Had to pivot from the man I wanted to sign as those two players are in. One more improvement though. With that one million pounds that we still have left, we're going to go better than Longello and definitely better than Clark. As welcome to the club, Graham Burke. He's 67 rated and less than a mil. I think that's personally a big steal coming from the Irish League yet again. And although he's not the youngest player, he sits on the wing with Patrick on the other and we found Smith in the reserves as that's a good team now and one thing i forgot to say in this save we're not going to be going halfway through the season we are going to be simming towards the end as i feel like this save in particular could take a while as first things first though before we see how our first season's gone we've got to start with the first game and that is accrington stanley the team we just stole our left back from as it starts positively here for sutton united and season number one Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the improvement in the team is quite non-existent. Apart from some of the new players like Longello and Burke, 70 rated at this level. But is it enough for Sutton to survive? Well, it is, you know, in 20th position though. Very much near the bottom, just like real life. And if you think I'm ending this save, if we finish, what, four places above where they are in real life, You've got another thing coming. As we need to be up there in the positions of Stockport and Wrexham. Doncaster even up there. As in the FA Cup, we were beaten by Michael Grimsby. No shame in that, lads. No shame as well in losing on a penalty shootout in the Carabao to West Ham. As that is a tight one. But unfortunately, our group as well in the BSM trophy was very tight. A lot of good teams in that one right there. As do we sell Graham Burke to try and get a bit of money? I don't know. Because he did score 16 goals in our survival season. With Buterman getting 10 as well. And Smith getting nine patrick getting five it's all about now what we do next season as before we get tucked into our second season here with sutton united if you are enjoying the video don't forget to like and smash the subscribe button if you are new as we're on a race to twenty-five thousand subscribers that is not likes on this video as you can see as well 
I've tried signing up contracts as we're releasing two from last year, Lee Angle, Ryan Jackson, not too disheartened about them. However, Craig Clay, ex Grimsby, meh, I don't want to lose him, but Omari Patrick and Harry Beautyman, them two are in our main side, so if them two leave, could have a bad effect. We'll try and sign them up later on as £5 million also this year. That is more like it. That is more like it. But our academy, we're going to have to buy a better scout next year. Not having that show up all the time. As anyway, positions that we need to address. We definitely need a centre mid because Clay's even leaving. But to improve overall two positions. The first one being goalkeeper. We lost our one on loan from Reading last year. And also striker. Smith is a good player, but he scored nine goals. And I think overall we can even improve on him. So I'm going to take a trip to my transfer hub as I've got a lot of players that need signing this year. And believe me, if we are going to try and get promoted, that £5 million is going to get stretched. As let's have lift off. Come on. First two we're signing up are free agents, hence why they're walking in first. As the first one's Mackenzie Hunt, another left back. So he's only for the bench, not exactly first team. As we need to strengthen that as well. The bench is very old and Alex Hartridge is an old centre back. He steps straight in at 65 rated and that is it. Four free agents, as the rest of it's going to be dancing with the transfer budget. Five million pounds is too much for Sutton. As it's all getting spent, with Daniel Pike being the first sign-in, he's going to be a right back. However, though, Harry Smith, you better be scared of Tommy Lonergan. One million pounds on yet another striker and another Irishman, but this one with bags of potential. But of course, don't think we're stopping there because the next one is Butyman's replacement, Adam O'Reilly. Again, another Republic of Ireland player as Alfie Kilger, another centre-back. Bought him for cheap because Mansfield was selling him for cheap as Joel Pereira X-Man United is our new goalkeeper as we've had a change of shape and honestly, how improved is this from the start? I mean, look across our back four, and five should I say, that is strong enough in itself to win League 2. As ratings have shot up, youth has shot up, the only thing that needs to shoot up now is Sutton. Up the leagues, of course, as we're training players for the new formation, but in the meantime, Walsall to start off with. A huge team that people have told me to rebuild before. For as we do get the results, as can the OGs and the new players put together spell success for Sutton United. And all we needed is a good season out of the lads that you see in front of you. Come on, Sutton. Don't make me say that cringy thing for nothing. As I'm going to shut my eyes and open them at the same time, as you guys are shown, we win the league. Us and Carlisle literally joins on everything. We've done it by three goals. Thank you, our strikers. If they, of course, are the ones that have been scoring as we lost in round one of the FA Cup. That's a shame. As same can be said, although against a Premier League team, for the 6-0 throbbing, we got from Everton. Not good, not good, and not good in the BSM, which we got through the group stage to get beaten by Stockport in. As overall though, lads, you have done us proud. We've got a 73 rated Graham Burke. What a player he is. He even was top scorer and to keep him here next season is going to be pretty difficult. Omari Patrick as well did sign a contract and James Clark. Well, I want to show you something about him. A 23-year-old attacking midfielder, but we don't play cams. He's going to change to right wing, which is going to take his rating, okay, up by one. I thought it would be better, and that was a bit of an anticlimax. And here in season three, not made easier to me than any time before, because we know which position we need. We've got a striker at 57 rated playing centre mid, because now Clark's gone on the wing. We need a central midfielder. Apart from that, maybe a right wing back because I put Hunt there. Or maybe we could switch his position. Although left-footed, he's got potential better than Kizzy 
and Pike on the bench. As money-wise this season, we haven't signed contracts up or got our youth scout as £4 million probably writes us out of getting that new academy scout that I wanted. Anyway, we've got to sign some bloody players. As how's our one-star, one-star scout done for the time being? That is terrible! Who are these players? They must be watching bloody Sunday League football because none of them are good enough to even get in our reserves. Honestly, scouts, you are taking the mick as Armstrong and Baker are as well. We can't sign anyone. As yes, I've just revealed the two players I were after because I've gone down a different avenue with an old good man. Or not old in his age, but Josh Benson because he was at Grimsby before and absolutely superb. The only problem with him though, well, I was going to say his rating lacked, but 68 rated's actually better than I thought he was. Of course, I didn't scout him and we still do need another centre mid probably to sit on our bench anyway. As you know, I'll spend money. Spending money's what I'm good at doing, as welcome to the club, a new Cypriot midfielder. Being smart with this one, as Giannis Satsias. He's come across from League 2 Wrexham. They got relegated, so I'm going to expose them and bring the 22-year-old in for our central slot. As I now believe our team's good enough, we start off with Bradford, who were in our league either season number one or season number two. I don't know when they got promoted, but to start season number three, can we do it with a win? You bet we do. As come end of year four, we've done it. We have bounced straight through League 2 and League 1, with Sutton United taking 13 defeats, but getting promoted with 27 wins. That is unbelievable, and a testament to our bat line, as we need to find ourselves and how we did in the Cups. As in the FA Cup, we were beaten by Charlton 3-1, but we got the last laugh in the league. Sorry, Nathan Jones, but your boys didn't cut it. But your ex-boys did, because Stoke beat us in the Carabao. Oh, and quarterfinals of the Bristol Street Motors, meaning Sutton United won't win that trophy. And that is a shame, because we won't beat it next year. As you can see, what really helped us finish second in the league. Our Irish trio, our free-leafed clover, Lonergan, Clark and Burke. Oh my days. They must have been perfect with an Irishman behind them and Statsias, who must have done well to get to 72. Even Benson on the bench, who seems like he hasn't played much, has got to that rating as well. As another player I have to stand out is this man, Mackenzie Hunt, who's now a right wing back, left wing back, left back and left midfielder. He's literally done everything for Sutton as he scored three goals, but it's Berg with 17, who is our top scorer, second with James Clark, and then third is Janice. The Cypriot is a god, literally a Greek god. Close enough, Cyprus and Greece. There's Tommy Lonergan as well. One for the future. And it doesn't really get any better than this. Sutton United in the championship. Or should I say it does get better than this? Because there's one step to still go and that team there should survive comfortably. It needs to survive comfortably because we're not getting many players into the squad with only 6 million given. That is an absolute shock to the system. And again, it probably stops us having an academy. A good academy. I should add to that as we've actually lost Burke. Graham Burke has left us. I was going to say Kilger. The captain needs kicking out, but honestly... We need to kick Patrick back out. As I'm sure I did contracts last year, and I did, it's actually the fact he's retired from football. Don't say that. Let me type Graham in as well, and you can see he has retired. No name showing up. And that is heartbreaking, because I don't know how to improve there. I was planning centre-back but now we've got to plan two positions. And I was fortunate enough last season to do contracts for this season, so we've got six million. And with six million pound, I'm looking to outsource as we go in away from the English leagues. You can see two players just on my shortlist, Haug and Kaplan. I am desperate for these players. As starting with Kaplan, I'm going to offer 2.8 to them. And that seemed reasonable. Get in there, lads. Can we get the Ajax youngster? 
but very cheap. What a deal this would be if we get him through the door and as you can literally see, that's what he's walking through. As yes, we've got the Turkish centre back in the club that is a big player for our championship survival. As also joining him, you didn't think I forgot about old Gen Z boy. I haven't, he's in. As we have literally just strengthened two positions with about three and a half million spent on fees and contracts. As you know what that means, don't you? Wonder kid o'clock as we've gone to the Brazilian league for Hugo Barbosa. Another centre half, but at 18 year old, he is 71 rated. Brilliant stuff. But surely you didn't think he was the only one, did you? As Manuel Simon. Welcome from Sao Paulo. Or Sao Paulo as Goodliff now comes out of the team and Simon's on the bench. We've got good centre backs. The pair of them welcomed in for our first game of the season. We have to kick off well with Middlesbrough in the championship. Come on Sutton United, let's kick off again as we lose for I think the first time in the first game of the season. Okay, and we're gonna check the team. Before checking the league, a lot of good ratings, including 180 rated. Clark is the first one to reach that milestone, and that's not that bad, because he's not too old. Overall, the players that we've added to our squad, the likes of Kaplan, Barbosa, have made us stronger, hopefully at the back anyway, as we've got good scorers. 18, 16, Haug with 30. Does that mean Sutton United surely not have done a treble bounce? They haven't. Oh, finishing ninth in the championship. Looking at the ratings of the squad, I'm actually disappointed with that, but we lost a lot of games and didn't draw many. That's not a good sign of things, you know. We lost a lot of games and means we have to improve next year. As we have to improve our cup runs as well, we lose to Plymouth Argyle 3-1 in round four. Not good enough at all as round three in the Carabao, more excusable, losing to Arsenal. As that's happened before, if I'm not wrong. Sutton United playing Arsenal in a cup. As yeah, next year we have to shut that gap up. We were only Two points off the playoffs. Two little points. As we probably need to sign a left back, Longello's probably reached his peak, as that's what I'm scared about with all the players. A lot of good ratings, a lot of good players, but the likes of Hartridge, Pereira, have probably reached their peak. So if we don't go up next season and get a couple more young players, we could potentially be just ravaged for players. As season number five, I believe, or season number six. I did my scouting before this, as I wanted to come prepared. A left back on the transfer list, a striker, two wingers. We've just got to decide between Kiwit and Madshed. As money seems to be less of an issue, 13 million. So depending on who we buy, we could get a good youth scout for next season or this season. The only problem is, are we too far deep already? I mean, we've already got good youth players. We've had to buy them, though, in Simon and Barbosa. Simon especially could jump in the team, you know, for Hartridge, the captain. I'm sick of replacing captain, so maybe one more season. As literally everyone in the team, apart from Longello, who I wouldn't mind on the bench, needs replacing. As contracts also, though, can't forget about them. They need replacing, especially on Lonergan. Don't want him running out and don't want all of these as Longello. No, I forgot I couldn't sign him up. So yeah, we're gonna lose Rosario Longello, but as long as we don't lose anyone else, we should be all dandy. As before, actually, we get to signing players. A good deal that's actually just gone through. Not only the sale of Amari Patrick are we replacing, but a loan deal. How perfect is this? Manuel Simon, our 18-year-old Haiti international going to either Fulham or Lecce. That is some good experience for the youngster who could come back good. Very good for the Premier League if we get there, of course. Assigning the players I showed you before, Sonny Cox from Maljby, as he's joined by another English player in Emran Soglo from RC Genk. Or KRC Genk, as a player I forgot to mention, Emilio Fernandez, a youngster sprung upon me. As like I said, our goalkeeper Joel Pereiro might be reaching his peak 
and he needs a little pressure, as hopefully he's gonna waffle that. Just sat behind him, a lot, lot younger, and he's both footed as well. Good trait to have as our final player, as I've alluded to, I really want to be in that Premier League come next year. And Montadair Majid, our 22-year-old right winger behind Clark. Add some good depth for a championship side anyway. As look at that team. We've got 160 rated and that is Pike on the bench. And that is only due to, of course, Longello leaving us last year as our first game of the season. QPR at home. Where we should be starting off with a win if we are to win this league. And guess what we do? Starting as we mean to go on, hopefully in the championship this year for our second season on the trot. And guess what we do? Guess what we do? Sutton United not only win the championship title, but they do it with 101 points, scoring only 70 goals. Didn't even score much. Must have got the balance between an attack and defense right, as we'll look at the players shortly, but we'll cycle through the cups. As the FA Cup again, we got stopped by Arsenal and the Carabao Cup. We'll have to search for our Ourselves. West Ham United. Now that is a throwback. That happened in season number one, if I'm not mistaken, the same way. Penalty shootout there as they're the championship playoff teams. We don't have to go through that. We won the league. I can't believe it. I actually sound a little bit giddy. And one decision I made, which I will never talk less about. Move Soglo to left wing back if you have him in your career mode. What a player. Him and Hunt on the other side. Lonergan and Clark and Haug all over the ratings of 80. As even looking at our bench, apart from of course Pike, we've got a strong bench that could survive in the Premier League. Honestly, I'm so happy. So, so happy. More than you believe with the ratings of our squad and the way we've gone about business in this safe. We've got Norwegian players, Irish players, even Cypriot midfielders who unfortunately get injured. He's only out for five weeks. His stats he has and of course he gets a rest at the end of the season anyway. As we're going to be keeping hold of him, Clark and Lonergan and Haugar front three. I hope we can keep hold of those as mostly everyone's good in this team. Barbosa only 20 year old and 80 rated or 81 rated sorry and another shout out because I'm in the mood for shout outs Fernandez on the bench he's getting unhappy he's 74 rated only four behind Joel Pereira who is 31 I think depending on what budget we do get next year selling Pereira is a move and spending a lot of cashes as well now I started two seasons ago by showing you the championship this time round I'm showing you the Premier League. And Sutton United have reached the promised land. Still, we don't stop here, though. We need to be in another competition. As does our squad actually have the quality to reach some kind of domestic success or continental success? I mean, I wouldn't mind domestic too. We have to be better in the trophy as our money for this season after contracts it's gone to 36 million not too shabby as i've took an executive decision though to try and transfer list players i want to make some money including from how as i have my mind on a replacement like i said Pereira, he can be transferred also, Hartridge, as we have the return of Seminar Regen, 18 year old and only one rating less. As I've only got one signing in mind and we're needing funds for that. Alex Hartridge, he's going to Luton. Good luck, Ridge Dog. There's also Joel Pereira. Good luck back at Porto, back in your homeland. Racking up the cash for this is our final outgoing for £72 million is how, as it makes sense as well. Man City paying a lot to get a Norwegian player next to the Norwegian Haaland. As that takes our money up, Sutton United have £140 million at their disposal. As there's a lot of players that I could really choose from. But the first player I want to sign is Mikhailo Mudrik. Very pacey, very agile. Not really worked at Chelsea. He's got to an 84 rated. And this is when we swoop in. As here we go. Mudrik, welcome to Sutton United. A couple of months ago, 
people might have said it's his level. But no, I think that's quite harsh. He's still a good player and he completes our front three, which looks still very strong. And although we've signed Mudrick, of course, that's not enough as our first game of the season is creeping amongst us. And it's Manchester City. We've got 64 million. Surely we don't sit on that. We get it spent. As as much as I trust my team. We need another midfielder, I think, and that calls for Lucas Bergvall. Vall had a fall into the championship with Bournemouth, but we're bringing him back here with Sutton. Threw him straight into our lineup, and he kind of looks like Mudrick. We've just signed the blonde, beautiful Premier League players. As this team just needs to survive season number one, as we get beaten by Manchester City. What a shot. And just survive somehow is the motto I gave the boys and they've just done that. 47 points. As deep this like I do. We finished on the same points as Chelsea but minus 21 goal difference. That is a little bit freaky. We did survive a bit comfortably as Liverpool win the league. And that is the top four. As flicking through the cup competitions, we still didn't do too well, I don't think, anyway. Barnsley beat us in the FA Cup, but how wrong I am. Because we've won the Carabao Cup. Another trophy. Finally, we've got our hands on a bit of silverware, as Bristol City did us a favour by beating Manchester City. We play Brighton and Everton, who we beat as well. Who did we beat in round four? Nottingham Forest. Quite comfortably. Seems like we had a good run in that competition as does that put us in the Europa or Conference League? I don't know, but looking at our squad's ratings, we do deserve some European football. I mean, the young lads we've signed like Barbosa, Lonergan, even Bergfall already 83 rated. But special shout outs especially to James Clark. Hitting his prime at 27, and he's been here a while. 88 rated with Mudrick finding form. 87 rated. Love that we signed him. And does the Carabao Cup get you any continental football? It does. We're in the Conference League. That's quite exciting. Not being in this competition much as improving the team. Well, we better check the budget first. We should have a bit of money for what? for what we've done for the club. 33 million. Is that all you're giving us, board? 33 million? Well, I I've got to sell players. Or sell a player. As you can see, the player I've transfer listed is James Clark. Now I know he's in his prime, but he's the most expensive player. If we sell him, of course, we can afford multiple ones. So let's see if we can get any bids in for that man. And honestly, just try and improve where necessary. Such as the old players, for example. They could start by leaving as there's James Clark. Goodbye, my friend. As he's chosen the end, Atletico Madrid, and he was sold for 207 million. As that's injected into our budget, alongside the 30 we had, contracts are done. That's getting spent. As we really need players that can set us alight as this man, the star boy, We'll be doing just that. Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. That is Bukayo Saka. He is wearing a Sutton United kit. As I fully accept the bounds of realism being broken. After all, Sutton are in the Brem. As the ex-Arsenal man's on the opposite wing to Mudrick. But we're not done yet. Welcome Christian Medina. Another stable midfielder to add to the mix. And I don't want to touch anyone else in the squad. I believe the potential's good. At least to win the Conference League. That's all I want to do. A Champions League place would be good. But we start with Man City. Again, what is this look for Sutton United? However, this time, we're unlucky not to win. Saka probably misses the biggest penalty he's ever taken. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, we'll move on quickly. <coughs> Euros, as we've got the Conference League right here. Geng, Copenhagen and Viking FK. And well... This isn't how I expected this season to go. Sutton United 
have won the Premier League. I can't believe I'm uttering those words. 71 points. That is a low tally to win it on. We even suffered nine defeats. And that means, like I said before, we've got that Champions League football. As I can't seem to find ourselves in the FA Cup. But in the Carabao, semi-finals, lost on penalties. Fair enough. Quickly say that to get it out of the way. As I wanted to check the Conference League. Really? I mean, semi-final loss, we got pretty close, but that is hard to take because we should have been winning that. With the quality in our side anyway, as look at our team. I mean, Bergvall had an injury, but he's 86 rated. Same with Simon, who's not been here long, and Barbosa, of course. I knew what I was doing signing them to. As for 90 rated, two in the squad in Bakayo Saka, of course, and now Mudrick. Lonergan just not there yet. However, he's going to be in the Champions League next year. Although, 27 goals is good. 36 goals from Bakayo Saka. Starboy in the making, or already made because he is 28 year old, and Mikhailo Mudrick. Our team is sensational. As what I'm about to say may sound like a very stupid thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. We should have money in the bank from winning the Premier League, although I don't want to make any signings. And yes, I am going to contextualize that. Of course, we've got two 90 rated players, two of the world's best, in fact. And I have faith in Lonergan. So maybe we send some bench players, actually, but for first teamers... This could win the Champions League. And on top of that, them good players that could win the Champions League, some of them are out of contract, and contract's going to be expensive. And as it stands, we have £95 million. That could go down to maybe 70 80 We won't have much money for a good player. Or a player that improves. That squad that you see, I mean, Hunt's in it. And he's kind of weak. But he's been here from almost the start. I want to keep hold of him. Same with Soglo's improved. And Kaplan, the captain. Fed up of selling our bloody leadership on the field. So yes, he's staying. And maybe we get one or two bench players. As yes, I'll do that. The first one being a bench player, Sebastian Borza from Bournemouth. And from all those Bs to an A in Tosin Adarabayo from Fuller. Two decent backups that just changed round. I mean, Goodliffe's been here from the start, but we need to get rid of him. Or keep him in the reserves until maybe we reach Champions League final, as that team and bench look good enough to do that. As for once as well, third time lucky we don't start with Man City. Leicester our first game. And if all goes well, this should be a win. But no, we saved by our left back. And draw 1-1. Bit of a shaky start there. But of course the only thing we care about at the moment is the Champions League. That's what we've got to win. As we do want to make sure that we're in it next year. But for this year Fiorentina, Benfica and Ajax. And silly me, of course. I should have mentioned when in the Champions League, which we still are against Inter, we do need to stop halfway through the season to see if we make it through, as we made it through perfectly. Not gonna check any other competitions, instead only the team that looks like it's going well so far. Lonergan still not hit that 90 rating, and Barbosa and Simon... They're the same rating now. Good for Simon. He's come a long way as no one's injured. Perfect. That's literally why we stopped as well. When I put a poll out on the community tab in the channel, a lot of you guys said stop to check the injuries. So that's what I am doing. And now, of course, that I've seen we're all good. We're going straight into Inter. Round of 16. Ooh, at the San Siro. A stadium I'd really like to visit in real life one day. However, not on a game like this where it's a nil-nil draw, as at least it's a home game next. We are at home, and all my days, it took extra time. In what was a 2-2 in normal time, three goals in extra, and Saka with two, send us through. Good stuff for Kayo, as Benfica next, a team that we did thump in the group stages. Only really screaming one thing, a win to us, but we're one goal behind. And we've got to travel to Benfica. No, it's usually Porto that beat us from Portugal as we've traveled very well. Get in, Lonergan. I told you he'd come good. He might not be 90 rated, 
but he's still on fire. What an achievement to come back from behind as Juventus up next. A team we always get in the semi-finals, whether it be Sutton, Swindon, Swansea, whoever, as the first game against them is a 1-1 draw. That means it's all still to play for as this leg, though. We win 4-3. Bakayo Saka is that clutch man. As Sutton United are going to be in the Champions League final where we play Leipzig. Okay, interesting team. Not everyone's cup of tea. Don't mind playing them as if we lose here, however, we get another shot next year. Fourth in the table as we won the Community Shield. That's not too great. We lost in the semis of the FA Cup. Doubly not too great. And the Carabao Cup, we are nowhere to be seen. Oh, there we are. Losing to Sheffield United. Terrible result for a beautiful team, honestly. We've got a 90-rated trio now up front. Saka, Lonergan and Mudrick, supported by Bergvall. Can it go wrong here in the final. And here we are, getting ready at the Bernabeu. Bakayo Saka booting balls at the goal. He can do it all he wants, though, in the warm-up. It's in the actual game that matters, as let's get started. Just gotta play football. Play it the way we have been doing. Martinez with a slide, and Saka with the ball. As we want him on the ball most of this game, you know. That's a good ball into Hunt, though. The captain for today. Overrun it a bit, but that is okay, of course. He's going to be shaky. I mean, not long ago, we were in League 2. As Mikhailo Mudrik. That's one man who shouldn't be shaky. He's been shook all around there. But he still kept the ball. And it's round the corner into Borza. Our Romanian light back or left back, whoever it is, stepping in the team. As yes, yeah, Soglo picked up an injury. And they've picked up a free kick here, Leipzig. If they've got Danny Olmo which they don't do. He could have done well. He'll probably be at Barca. That's the transfer that always happens as Mikhailo Mudrik just going to run to the right-hand side. Oh, but he lost it to fellow Ukrainian Mikolenko, and now we need to win this back. I don't like it when they keep the ball. Cooking just a little bit, but we do have the ball back now. Medina, we're going to go to the right-hand side. That's the place we should get luck because that is where Saka is. Bakayo Saka cutting inside and shooting at the goal. And there we have it. Just before our time, the star boy of Sutton sets the Bernabeu alight. And what a splendid finish. I mean, he cut inside did our number 10. And there was no missing that from the moment it left his foot. Get in there, lads. Just what we needed. Still, we need to kick on. And Hunt, what are you doing, mate? If you want to lift this trophy, you've got to be better than what you've just done. However, Bergfall, this could lead to something. Another goal, please. Mudrick with a crap chip. And that just came before half time with the scoreline. It is 1 0 to Sutton in the Champions League final. And that is not something I expected to be saying in this save. Although, Jatta, good save, Fernandez. That could have slipped in, but Mikhailo Mudrick, you know, Mudrick. Can he slip behind these? It's a good run. Mikhailo Mudrik, he's around the bat line. He's using his pace and experience. Mudrik, it's 2-0. And what a finish from the other winger this time. Mikhailo Mudrik. That is what you call a true counter-attack. I mean, he even side-footed it into the side netting on a very slanted angle. Fantastic one, that, lads. Honestly, just before the hour mark as well. But we aren't going to give in because Bors of the Romanian now running at the defence. Is Lonergan in the middle? It's Saka who was almost there. Good little move as this is the first time in a while we've dominated a Champions League final. Good save, Costa. As long as we keep them out, we should be completely fine now and get out of Mudrick's way, Lonergan. Still kept the ball and that is a brilliant pass through to the captain, Hunt, who almost joined in. That would have been just... Fantastic! Oh, so unlucky as still Leipzig go forward, and that was a very poor clearance. Kaplan almost cost us the game, however. The goalkeeper's quick ball. Fernandez could get us another. It is Hunt again running through. He needs to try and cross that in. Lonergan with a chest and a pass around the corner that doesn't work. The game's almost over now, and Saka down the line again. Could it be a third here? Bakayo Saka at the near post. Who doesn't score his chance, but still Lehman with the ball. Referee blow that whistle, as you know what that means. As we have took Sutton United now to the Champions League title, and it's on par now 
with the job we did with Dublin. A brilliant save, the Dublin one. I highly recommend you watch it. We only did it with Irish players. We almost did that right here. A lot of Irish players, the reason we started improving as it's going to be Hunt to lift the trophy. He's deserved to do that. As if you guys out there believe your team deserves to do that. Comment it down below and it could be the next one to do so.